Thank you and thanks for the invitation to come here. And uh, as Hendrik says, I will share this afternoon session. So this will be some words about the background of the manifesto, which uh, um, uh, Hendrik uh, came to me at Chalmers uh, uh, University of Technology School of Architecture, where I'm teaching. Uh, I think it was in the spring 2009, and uh, we had an interesting discussion, and that led to Henrik inviting me to be a sort of editor of, of this manifesto. And uh, what I'm going to say here now is more about um, some background ideas, and I'll come to, to the formulation of the manifesto in, in the very end of this discussion. Um, the background I had at that time in the spring 2009 was that I had attended the first uh, uh, World Architecture Festival in Barcelona in uh, October 2008. Uh, it was just after the outbreak of the financial crisis and uh, um, it was an interesting situation. Uh, this is the first uh, occasion of such a festival of architecture, a global festival of architecture. And, and, uh, I went there as a representative, uh, as an editor for the Swedish Union of Architecture. Some of you must, might recognize this big brother watching us from, from the screen there. Uh, it's Sir Norman Foster, who is actually sitting down there, and uh, he is displayed on this big screen in the lecture hall. And uh, as you see, I'm not the only one who is taking a photo of this situation. And so I have been in the same room as Norman Foster, which is about the uh, Iconic architecture is, is discussing really. Uh, the whole uh, uh, thing with this uh, World Architecture Festival was actually about uh, uh, a large number of projects from all over the world uh, being sent in. And uh, uh, first, there was a preliminary jury, and then a number of projects were selected for uh, juries in 17 different fields. And uh, as uh, a Scandinavian, I think I was appointed to be chairman of the jury for the category of health. And this was the best project, which is uh, uh, it's a health center for women in Ogadugu in Burkina Faso. And it was designed by uh, an Italian office called Fare Studio, which I had never heard about before. And uh, uh, afterwards, we, we had the opportunity to meet Riccardo Manucci from this office. And, uh, he told us about his way of working, and uh, he was an experienced, uh, experienced designer, and he designed uh, offices and hotels and things in, in uh, Dubai and places like that, and there were quite a lot of money on that. And then he used that money to do this sort of bona fide projects, which it wasn't paid for, more or less. And so, what, what my question is, with this background now, is, is and, and what Henrik asked me to, to contribute to writing a manifesto, I really couldn't resist that because as a historian of architecture, I'm very interested in, in how uh, architects in different periods, especially in the modernist, have used uh, uh, manifestos as a way of, of uh, advancing architecture and discussion about architecture. Of course, uh, there was a big exhibition in, in uh, this wonderful uh, space you have here, and uh, <coughs> we have seminars, and uh, as a background of these seminars, uh, that was published this, uh, this manifesto, that, which uh, starts by three uh, paragraphs. Uh, the first one is saying that uh, architecture responds to the most basic needs of human beings, and you can read the rest, but this is a sort of of core sentence of, of that first uh, thing. Architecture is very important, uh, briefly said. Uh, and then you have these uh, five points, because a manifesto should have five points. Uh, what we uh, put together then was that uh, an architecture of necessity is responsible. Uh, this is very much, as I see it, uh, a question of cultural sustainability, but also of social sustainability. Uh, because architecture is a very complex profession and, uh, and uh, this needs a deep knowledge of things. Uh, an architecture necessity is also diligent, on source code, which means that things take time and they have to be uh, allowed to take time, uh, which is also uh, again a cultural question, this time aspect of all, both of designing and of use in the buildings. Uh, the third point is, of course, that this architecture sustainable in, in the evolution sense, which is very much about ecological and economical sustainability then. 
for example, like Tim Jackson's book, Prosperity Without Growth, which is discussing these questions. Uh, an architecture of necessity should also be just, uh, like the spirit level book about equality, uh, which is very much about just, justness. And the fifth point is that, that uh, uh, an architecture of necessity should be open, uh, which is very much what, what Stuart Brand is, is talking about in his book, How Buildings Learn. Uh, a building is not something you finish, a building is something you start. So that's a basic argument here. And this is uh, the competition which uh, was held, and these uh, three architects' offices uh, uh, in and, and uh, the Berlin office, Karin Klingbeil, and uh, the uh, Dutch office, Tempetil, run by two German architects, uh, who were given the prizes. And, and this was uh, a process uh, from the projects uh, uh, left to the exhibition in 2010 uh, here in Wichelon. And the jury was, uh, I was the chairman of the jury, together with Ricardo Vanucci, whose project I already mentioned this. Center, health center in, in Ugadugu, and Michel Kaufmann, uh, uh, an architect from California, uh, the Henry Ford of Green uh, Houses, uh, she was called. Um, you can also see in the exhibition more of, of an introduction of this theory. Uh, we had some 20 uh, selected projects to select between, and we were asked to, to, to choose uh, three uh, we thought were the three most interesting. and, and uh, uh, they are the ones that will be presented here this afternoon. Um, before we continue that presentation, they should also be given the prizes for, for, for their uh, achievements here by being selected for, for, for this, uh, from this competition then. And uh, the prizes will be given by Leif Larsson, who is the Vice Chairman of the Regional Council here. So I give you the floor. Thank you. Uh, it's a very big pleasure for me to we show that the price is uh, <laughs> Thank you very much for the invitation. It's been very curious to see, for example, the uh, development in next year. I always say communication is the most important thing in our society to transport ideas and yeah, to, to be in movement. We like very much by, uh, about the architecture of necessity that the focus is here very much on daily production. I mean, what is more, uh, let's say, convincing to make out of the normal thing something special? I think this is the focus of the exhibition. We like these idea very much and we would like to thank you for all your efforts and also for inviting us. Thank you.